Hello everyone, welcome back to Just My Stupid Opinion. I'm Adrian Lloyd. So, just a couple things real quick. Uh, I, I, for this day, I don't, just going to be much more uh, informal kind of video. Don't really have a topic in mind. I'm just going to be sort of discussing my, I, some ideas I have on the upcoming election. And I might touch on some more updates with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, I don't have any camera over yet because uh, I ended up getting a new computer. And it's a tower, so it didn't, like, it's not like my laptop that had a built-in uh, webcam, so I gotta go out and get one of those. I just haven't done it yet. Um, one of the reasons, too, I have not really been making videos is because, uh, a couple of reasons. One of the main ones is that I'm not exactly sure what I want to talk about. I kind of want to just switch it up from the usual in-the-news-today type, uh, type of videos. And I'm just not sure what direction I want to go yet. I've also been getting over being sick. I thought it was just a chest cold, and it turns out it's a little bit more than that. Nothing serious as for, as far as I know yet, but uh, just been a little sick with that lately. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, the upcoming election and just put some of my thoughts and predictions out there as to what's going to end up happening. And I'm just going to scroll through uh, my Minds account because it's usually dedicated to uh, a lot of people I follow in there. It's just about memes, so... I figured that'd be a little more entertaining for you guys than talking to a, uh, than watching a blank screen while I talk. So with the upcoming election is that, um, you, you, you know, the thing about, um, about, uh, following political news is that it's very easy to get into a bubble, you get yourself into a confirmation bias bubble. And, uh, you don't even mean to do that intentionally, but, uh, a good example of, of it is that, uh, on my Twitter account, uh, everyone I follow, most of the people I follow on there are, you know, right-leaning conservatives, libertarians, those sort of people. So everywhere I look, it's telling me that, you know, Scheer's going to win, uh, become the new prime minister. Some are also saying Maxime Bernier and the few like left-wing accounts that I do follow they're, you know, suggesting that, like, Trudeau or even Jagmeet Singh on some occasions are. I'm not sure if you're going to be hearing it, but my dog's playing with her chew toy in the back, so if you hear some squeaking, that's all it is. Um, so it's very easy to get into a confirmation bias, and that's one of the things why I don't really trust polls too much. I mean, you can trust them to a short, a small extent. But uh, they can be, it, it all depends on how the pollsters conduct themselves. If they're conducting all their polls in the city, then you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to have a liberal bias. And if you're going out to the more rural areas, it can be a lot of the same thing. So, um, so I just kind of want to put out what I thought from what I can see, what my thoughts and predictions are going to be. So in terms of what's going to happen with the Liberals and Justin Trudeau is I don't think that they're going to get reelected. I think that the controversies and the way that Trudeau has presented himself to everyone has actually done more damage to himself. And even just talking about the controversies alone this year, I mean, we have the uh, we have the SNC scandal that ended up coming out, which recently we just found out that Trudeau violated a. Uh, the ethics code on that and he pretty much is refusing to apologize for it some are questioning whether it was in fact not just a violation of the ethics code but was in fact illegal then we also have uh the mark norman case where it appears that he got involved with that one too and it looked like that was going to get blown open suddenly charges against mark norman disappear and these charges were against Mark Norman when we found out that he had permission from the previous government to talk about it, but then he was put on trial for leaking classified information. And there was a lot of, of shady shit that was going on with that. And then even you can see it on the screen right here. Trudeau's liberals ran ads on Facebook soliciting donations in the U.S. and the U.K. despite the, uh, it being illegal to accept donations from a foreign country is something well known. So all these things are going to accumulate with the average voter, even though the average voter kind of just, uh, as I said before, that they don't really take a notice to politics too much throughout the day-to-day -day lives. But when it's getting close to election time, they poke their head out of the sand and kind of figure out which way the wind's blowing, what each candidate are saying about each other. I think Trudeau's done enough damage to himself through these scandals this year alone that it's actually people are going to start to take notice. On top of that is just in passing what they see about Trudeau, he appears like a very arrogant person. 
And uh, I mean, like one thing that I found quite surprising is that just a few days ago, I was having lunch with my immediate family, my parents and my brother. And I'm the only right wing minded person in my immediate family. My parents, my brother, they're liberals. And even they were coming out and saying some things about Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party that they were not happy with them. And one of the main things definitely had to do with his arrogance. They even felt that he was arrogant. And uh, that's that's something that a lot of conservatives and right-minded people have been talking about for a long time. So they don't really know what direction they're going to go in this upcoming election. And I think that's safe to say that that's exactly the same sort of thing that... Uh, that, that a lot of liberals feel. And you see how a lot of liberals are jumping ship already. That they're already liberals saying, I'm not running in this upcoming election, the 2019 election. They're just done with this whole situation. They've done enough damage to themselves that I don't think they can recover from that. So the liberals are probably going to get... Uh, the liberals are probably going to get... They're not going to get reelected. I'm just trying to think whether they would actually be relegated to third party status again. Um, it's hard to say. One reason, actually, I, when I was originally thinking about it just a little while ago, I was thinking yes, but maybe now why I won't say no is the fact that there's not really a strong alternative to take over for them for the official opposition. So I think they're going to be come close to getting relegated to third party, but they won't actually because of it. And then I think the conservatives are going to have a, a minority government. They're going to get elected into power. Um, one of the reasons I think it's only going to be a minority is because I don't think Andrew Scheer's done a good job when it comes to uh, unifying the conservatives, unifying the right. Uh, he's kind of let it split under his watch. Uh, he's also sort of been a very milk toast and turned against some of the things that he kind of said he stood on and punishing some MPs and not letting other people run as a candidate, that he's actually kind of done some damage there to himself. But I think most people are looking for to get rid of Justin Trudeau, that they'll be more willing to vote for Andrew Scheer. I think he actually has, even if he has a good, more or less does well as prime minister, I think he's going to have a much harder time in the future, when it, not this election, but the election after, simply because I think then it's not just going to be about performance, but what does he stand for? So I think that is actually like uh, something that is going to be a detriment to him in the long run. So the reason I'm also saying I think Andrew Scheer and not the PPC is because the PPC has not been polling very well. I think they can still pull. Uh, I think they'll still scrap a seat or two in Parliament, but uh, more or less, they've been ever since they uh, they unleashed their party, made it official. They've been polling at about four percent, and that seems to not have changed. And I mean, Maxine Bernier has had attention in the media. Uh, he's been reported on. He's done interviews in in CBC, CTV, and a few other uh, mainstream media sources. But his polling doesn't really seem to change. So I don't really this argument that some people in the PPC are saying that Maxine Bernier will become the new prime minister. It was easier to make that argument about a year ago when he was first leaving the Conservatives, when he was first ready to unleash his party, first ready to unleash his party platform. But he's not actually but he's not actually done much to get himself more attention, to get more people talking about him. So I don't think that he's uh that there's any chance that he's ever going to come in on that. Now, when it comes to the Greens and the NDP, this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. Because uh as I, I stated before when I was having lunch with my family. They were talking about, uh, they're not sure what they're going to do. My brother kind of came in and said, like, well, maybe it's time to vote for the Greens, you know, because, like, they're not going to vote for the Conservatives. I know my family, they're not going to do it. Um, so this is actually something that a lot of people have done. If they don't like the other candidates, they've always used the Green Party as sort of a throwaway vote so they could still vote, but then it's like it's somebody who's not really going to get in or anything like that. But now this seems to actually be paying off in the Greens' favor because a lot of people are now starting to look towards the Green Party as 
uh, the alternative as maybe they should deserve a chance. So I think we're going to see a actually surprisingly green surge in this upcoming election. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be the official opposition. They might still only be a third party status. But I think they can actually put the NDP in the running that they can actually possibly out, uh, beat out the NDP. Because typically it's always been in politics that you had the liberals and conservatives as either the government or the official opposition, and then the NDP was kind of that third party, except for back in 2011 when they had that surge and they became the official opposition. Um, so I think in this situation, Jagmeet Singh has not done a good job when it comes to to bringing his own party together. In fact, a lot of people aren't happy with him. And one thing I've said about Jagmeet Singh is that he's actually more dangerous than Justin Trudeau because he believes the exact same thing that Justin Trudeau does, but he wants to go even further. That's his biggest argument against Justin Trudeau is Justin Trudeau hasn't done enough. So take the, take the platform and the policies of the Liberal Party, put it on steroids, and you have Jagmeet Singh's NDP. But a lot of people don't seem to be very happy with him. They don't really seem like he's, he's done a good job as the leader. And I would say that he hasn't done a very good job as their leader as well. He really has just been kind of uh, there, but not there. But they are socialists. So, you know, if they, I'm totally happy to see him go, the party go down in flames. But then Jagmeet Singh has the exact same problem that the liberals have, which is they are now having veteran politicians jump ship. Veteran politicians um, who are just disappearing. They are getting out of the party, getting out of politics because they're not interested anymore. Uh, and so this is going to be a problem for them when they're coming up because they're going to be running on a brand new, not brand new, I should say. They're going to be running on a lot of new faces, a lot of new politicians, a lot of new MPs who are rookies. So they're going to have a hard time to start off and they're already struggling. And this is going to definitely be a problem for them. And for a long time, NDP voters, some of these people have become uh, faces to them. I'm trying to remember one man in particular, but uh, uh, like his full name, I know his last name was Christofferson. Christofferson. He was a long-term NDP MP who ended up last year uh, over some controversy, he ended up saying that he was not, uh, that uh, he was not going to be running anymore. Once this, uh, this election, once this election comes up, he's not going for re-election. So we've been having the same problem in the, both the liberals and the NDP that people are jumping ship, which is another reason that I believe that the conservatives are going to come out with at least a minority. It's possible they could pull off a majority, but I don't think that they will. Just judging, sort of trying to step back and sort of take a look around, I don't believe they're going to pull away from this. But one of the reasons that I do think that they will come away with the victory has to do with the trend that's been going on in Canada over the last couple of years. Because we've watched as when Justin Trudeau came in, we had a bunch of liberal and NDP governments that were in power in, uh, in provincial governments. But that has had a drastic shift. The NDP in, uh, in Alberta ended up getting destroyed. The liberals in, uh, in Ontario ended up getting destroyed. Quebec, which was a liberal stronghold, ended up getting destroyed. So, and uh, even like the, the BC, they had a liberal government, but then that ended up getting transformed into a coalition between the Greens and the NDP. So we're watching as suddenly from Alberta all the way to Quebec, we have conservative governments across the board. And then uh, over on the Maritimes, we also have some of the same thing. Like we have, uh, I think... I think it's Newfoundland right now. That is the only, is the only, um, is the only liberal government over there. Although I could be wrong, but even like PEI came away with a minority government in their elections. It was actually quite surprising. So some people are also speculating whether this will have some sort of whether some of these 
leaders in the provincial governments will actually have a bad did, uh, will have a bad effect on Andrew Scheer. So someone like Jason Kenney or someone like Doug Ford, uh, especially Ford they're pointing to because he's actually had like a year, year and a half by the time the election rolls around. He's about about a year and a half in politics and as the leader of uh, Ontario. That some are wondering what some of the things that happen to him is going to affect negatively Andrew Scheer. And I'm going to say no. No for a few different reasons. We didn't see this sort of trend happen when it came to the Liberals in 2015. Because we had, like, so for instance, you had Kathleen Wynne in Ontario, who was all part of the Dalton McGuinty, uh, McGuinty Liberals. And that really didn't seem to affect Justin Trudeau too much. Um, although there is, seems to be two different uh, points of view, especially in the media, when it comes to whether it's a liberal government and when it's a conservative government. So it's, uh, it's quite possible that maybe it'll come back to affect him a little bit, especially because Doug Ford's popularity has taken a, uh, has just fallen off a cliff since he ended up getting elected, from what we can tell. So that might affect... Andrew Scheer slightly and Jason Kenney and some of the other uh, and some of the other conservative um, uh, premiers across the country, they might affect a little bit, but I don't think that much because I think right now um, Justin Trudeau is a bigger lightning rod to everything that's going on than any of these conservative MPs really are. So most people, as I've stated before in the past, that uh, maybe I already said it once in this video, I just don't remember. Um, but most people, when it comes to politics, they they kind of just stick their head out when it comes election time and then just kind of see which way the the wind is blowing, sort of figure out just in like, <laughs> try and figure out what has happened over the last four years over the course of maybe a few days before they have to go vote. Um, but Trudeau has done so much damage to himself with all the controversies he's done so much damage to himself with his arrogance and what he says and just like how bloody awful he is at public uh at speaking publicly without having a teleprompter there or having a speech written down that he's actually done more damage to himself he's a bigger lightning rod than doug ford or jason kenny or any of these other ones really are so that's going to be uh that's going to be an interesting situation, but I think that more people are concerned with getting Trudeau removed from office. They don't want to see him there anymore, that it's not really going to come back and affect um, Andrew Scheer nearly as much. Andrew Scheer is going to have a lot more trouble with these sort of, uh, with these sort of people, if they're still around, in the, up in the election after that, if he gets voted in. Because people are more concerned of getting Trudeau out of office than they really are about the type of person that uh, that um andrew Scheer really is i mean that is always going to be important if you're a liberal or you're a conservative but there are certain things that are, are that andrew Scheer is getting past getting passed over when it concerns andrew Scheer that are going to become much more prominent when it comes up to uh when he's in office so things such as uh things such as like um how he says about his principles. He says he's for one thing and then he ends up doing the opposite. So this will have to do with him suppressing MPs and candidates. Uh, this is going to have to do with him talking about how he's for free speech and other conser supposedly conservative principles when he doesn't seem to uphold them when the time comes. So these will be things that will affect him much more. And these have been concerns I've had for Andrew Scheer for a long time. That's why I was never really too into him, even when he ended up getting elected, and I could see there were some shady things. One thing I found a little shady when he ended up getting, a couple of years ago, when he got voted in for the leader of the Conservative Party, was the fact that he ended up, he ended up, uh, uh, he had all these campaign promises, and then literally the day after he got elected on his website, he took those all down and it just had a giant picture of his face with the words thank you on it. And I thought that was uh, very weird that you suddenly you couldn't go back and check on what he was talking about. So uh, there's plenty uh, there's plenty of what I found a little bit suspicious for the way that Andrew Shearer conducts himself.
So I guess you could say that that's some more of my prediction of what I see coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. So I guess you could say that's my prediction. You're going to see a conservative minority government with a liberals that are teeter-tottering, probably still remaining as the official opposition, but teeter-tottering on a third party, uh, becoming relegated to a third party position. You're going to see the NDP get even smaller than they are now, and you're going to see a green surge in the upcoming election. And then PPC will kind of be where they are right now, where they're sitting there with uh, a couple seats. They may, like right now they got one seat, it's just Maxime Bernier. They might gain a cu just a couple more in the upcoming election, but uh, I really am not expecting too much more than that, to be very honest with you. And then only things that will, uh, things that'll make an, a, a difference is uh, also sort of, how third parties are involved. How third parties are involved with this, what's going on, how... Because um, we remember that third parties played a big influence in the 2015 election. So we'll see if, that, if those play a big influence. And then it'll be things such as whether social media gets suppressed, how the news ended up reporting on this. But we can kind of tell how that's going to go. Especially when you have Trudeau that's setting up all of these fact checkers in through Facebook and Twitter and all them in order to try and suppress the independent voices. Uh, that's really just the prelim right now. It's going to be worse than that, give it a, a like a decade or so, that this is just the preliminary setting up, and then you give it about 10 years, and you're going to see that that is all sorts of independent voices are getting suppressed because it's considered fake news, even though it's like, they're even starting to say that old news is considered fake news. Now, old news articles are fake news articles now. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I've definitely made that mistake where you think an old news article is a one that maybe only came out of, like within the last few days, but it's, it is the responsibility of everyone to check the dates of the news articles on things like that. So that's going to be interesting. So I'm kind of curious to know what everyone else thinks about uh, what sort of predictions. Uh, I'm curious to know what sort of predictions you all have about what's going to come up, uh, how the parties are going to kind of land after the election. So let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll be back sooner or later. I might still be sort of just doing this, putting out some random videos here and there, but sooner or later I'll kind of figure out how, what direction I want to go, what I want to talk about. And uh, I'll be back making more regular videos. Have a good, uh, have a good rest of your week, and I'll talk to you guys soon.